Hi all. Very good morning, afternoon, and good evening to all the participants. Uh, I would like to thank you all for joining the webinar today. Uh, today's webinar is all about how to use remote device uh, for development using P Cloudy. Yeah. Uh, I'm Nilesh and uh, I'll be the speaker for today's webinar. I hit the pre-sales at Peak Lowry. The webinar today uh, will be for 45 minutes, uh, roughly around 45 minutes. And the way we have scheduled the webinar is like first um, close to 30 minutes, we will be having uh, a discussion about the topic today. And last uh, 10 to 15 minutes will be uh, reserved for the question and answers if you have any. Uh, so if you have any questions during the webinar, please uh, use the questions tab uh, in the GoToMeeting uh, window you have, and uh, I shall answer the questions uh, uh, towards the end of the day, uh, towards the end of the webinar once you ask me the questions, yeah. Uh, just a, a, a information that, you know, the participants will also get the recording of this webinar. So in case uh, you're missing something, we'll definitely get out of that. Okay. All right, so without uh, losing the time today, let's move on to the next slides to see what we have in the store today for uh, from P Cloudy perspective for the development. Uh, so. We're quickly going to see about the P Cloudy use cases. We're all do uh, you think pCloudy is used in uh, today's uh, application development life cycle? So pCloudy is most commonly known today in the mobility world for the testing practices or the platform which is used for the testing as such. Indeed, it is used for the testing uh, um, thoroughly. I mean, everybody believes that. But is pCloudy restricted to testing? Uh, uh, the apps alone or there are some more things which can be done right so yeah p cloudy is not used across the application i mean p cloudy is uh, indeed used across the app development life cycle and this is what we are going to see today okay so let's see the typical use cases which we have noted it down here now i believe there are some uh, participants who are already using p cloudy so they are aware of uh, about, about P Cloudy, maybe uh, some of the use cases they may not, but uh, most likely they are aware of in general what P Cloud is all about. There are some customers or some participants who have joined today uh, are seeing P Cloud first time for them. It may be not, you know, they, they may not be able to correlate immediately what we are talking about, but once we start seeing the demonstration today here, maybe they will uh, be able to get more information about that. And it, uh, of course, we have several other webinars which they can go through to understand what exactly PCLAV is all about. So let's quickly see what typical use cases uh, uh, we have where PCLAV fits in properly in the life, uh, life cycle development. So First is of course testing as we have mentioned and most of the customers are typically using it for the testing. So uh, there are two ways which you can use it uh, this platform for in the testing. One is of course to do your manual testing uh, of your applications and uh, the automation. So that's something most of the customers are aware of and most of the customers are indeed using this platform for uh, the testing purpose. The second uh, use case wherein P Cloudy fits properly is the continuous integration. Now, uh, if, if you have uh, the CI CD pipeline, P Cloud is the perfect fit there because you can actually use the remote devices to run your test automation, be it regression, be it unit test, or whatever it is. It can be actually uh, plugged into your continuous integration. But if you really look at it, it is again a part of or the extension of the automation testing. Right, so these two things are pretty much uh, most of the customers are aware of. But today's webinar, we are talking about uh, about the developers. The next next one here is developers. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is the this is the new angle uh, to the P Cloudy platform. You know, this is what we are going to see. It. Can developers use P Cloudy? Can developers use the devices remotely on P Cloudy? That's what we are going to see it today. Right, so. The agenda for today's um, uh, webinar will be, we, we will be seeing the device thermal part. What, what do you mean by device thermal? 
okay the android tunnel which is basically an extension of the device tunnel we will be covering the ios tunnel and of course we will be having the video demonstrations for both android tunnel and ios tunnel today to show you what exactly uh, i'm talking about how can you leverage the devices uh, which are remotely available on the p cloud devices to use in your development uh, process and of course we will also see the cross platform uh, uh, features or the uh, tools or the frameworks which can be used with p cloud along with this right so without wasting for the more time let's move on to the next uh, part here where we will we are, we are going to see what we are talking about you know in terms of device tunnel right okay so in a broad way when i say device tunnel we are talking about the virtual usb right now let me explain what this diagram is all about right so those who are already using pcloudy uh, they will be able to correlate it very easily and those uh, for uh, those who are uh, very new to pcloudy i will try to explain them as well yeah so this is how the uh, system will look like let's say you are as a user uh, accessing pcloudy from your local machine you might be using windows you might be using mac or whatever workstation you have and you will be connecting connecting to pcloudy.com through internet so this solid line signifies that you know you are connecting through uh, lan or wan or wi-fi to the cloud right which is actually at pcloudy.com and then of course we have host of devices we have a lot of iphones and android devices connected to our cloud which you can access remotely to do the testing on your uh, local site right so this is a device a generic device which is actually connected so basically you are taking a remote of this device through internet and then working with that device when you are accessing a device remote uh, remotely for manual testing or even for the automation that's how typically the way we work or most of the organizations most of the competitors uh, or most of the platforms on the remote side work here right now when we say virtual usb or device tunnel what we mean to say is this is the logical connection you have this is the logical connection between the between your workstation and the remote mobile device at peak cloudy now what if suppose you want to connect a device physically to your local machine and then run certain tests or use certain uh, tools or platforms or frameworks which are available on your local machine those platforms those tools or those sdks will recognize the device only and only if the device is physically connected to the usb port of that particular machine right now since the device is remotely available it is on our public uh, on our cloud and you are actually accessing this over internet so basically it is happening on the um, uh, any standard browser so it is the requests are going through http right the device is not actually connected to your machine through usb right so what is suppose we create a virtual usb and make that device the same device available on your local machine so instead of the request going like this the way you are seeing for the solid line instead of going to the cloud if i just shown the dotted line which is just an extension of the uh, USB cable, which we call it so virtual USB and connected to my device, right? So by using this uh, fundamental, what we are calling it as a device tunnel or virtual USB, we are allowing you to connect any device of your choice from pCloudy, virtually connected to your local machine so that you can use any uh, uh, frameworks in the tools or use that device for your development purpose as well right that's the whole webinar is all about right i believe you understood what device to is we are moving to the next slide if you have any questions please feel free to uh, put it in the uh, uh, question q a uh, window there and we will take it to, uh, towards the end all right Moving to the uh, next slide, which talks about the advantages. What what are, what are all the things you can do with the device tunnel? So, so there are certain pros and cons for this particular method. And the first um, uh, advantage which you are going to get it 
through device tunnels, of course, you can do the debugging. Now, debugging is a challenge. I mean, see, there are restricted amount of uh, mobile devices available in any organization. And if the organization is moving to a uh, cloud-based solution like pCloudy or some other solution, they will be uh, anyways having very less number of devices with them. So even the developers will not get enough devices to do the debugging or doing the unit testing of their code. So it, it, it makes perfect sense to uh, you know, debug the application uh, uh, on the remote devices. So debugging is something which is pretty much available on the uh, uh, cloudy devices if you're using the device tunnel. And of course, quick prototyping and MVP kind of things. This is typically used, you know, in case of, uh, 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 you know, if, if you are actually using something new, let's say you want to, um, let's say you are using um, Espresso at this moment and you want to move to um, APM, for example, and you have written something on the APM and you want to see whether that is working or not, you can just connect the device to device tunnel and see whether your prototyping, your MVP is working there or not, right? Of course, uh, we do have a separate mechanism uh, to run the Espresso test or the um, APM test directly on pCloudy. But yeah, I mean, this is just an example. If you have any other tool, uh, which typically needs the device to be connected virtually to uh, locally to your machine. Those tools, uh, the uh, prototyping about those, or POC about uh, those particular tools can also be done using this. Now, the only cons here which we have uh, is about the speed because you have a limitation. You have a limitation of the USB uh, transmission data speed, and on top of that, you will be also having the limitations on the uh, internet speed to which you are actually connecting to the uh, pCloudy servers, right? So these are some pros and cons which we have uh, for the device tunnel. Now moving to the Android de uh, device tunnel part, just to see how you can actually uh, uh, do the uh, device tunneling or making the uh, device virtually connected to your local machine for the Android platform as such. And what are all things you can do? It? So of course you can do the debugging as we have explained a little while ago. And you can also do the uh, uh, you know useful, uh, this, this will be useful to fix the issues on the devices with the different OS uh, combinations and uh, you typically have, you know, that there could be different hardware and software configurations. You don't have to really go and look for a specific uh, device. You can actually get the device directly from here, right? So this is the advantage which you are going to get it for uh, uh, using pCloudy uh, device tunnel to debug your Android devices. So the virtual USB on Android will exactly look, exa uh, concept-wise it is pretty much same as we have seen there. Now, in this diagram, if you really look at it, we are talking about the uh, specific device from the Android platform. So we will be having 500 plus devices, which is a combination of Android and iOS devices with different hardware and software configuration. So what you have to do is you have to go and choose the specific device on which you want the device uh, on which you want to you know, debug your application as a developer, right? Or you want to run your te unit test uh, as a developer on the a specific application on a specific device. So you'll have to just go look for a specific device of your choice, do a small process of connecting the device and you know making it virtually available on your local machine and that's it. Then you will see that device is connected to your local machine and you can uh, do wonders the way you do it today by connecting the device uh, to your local machine. So I have a quick uh, demonstration here for the uh, uh, the feature which we call device tunnel as we have explained. So I'm just going to run that here and I'm going to explain that here. Right? So I do have a code here which is basically in the Android Studio which you can see it here. It's a very sample small uh, project which we have just to show you that you know when you when I as a developer want to develop, uh, you know, debug this particular application on the real device how can I do it? without having a phone in my physical position, right? So I, I, I can actually connect to the device uh, from the pCloudy remotely by creating a virtual USB and then, you know, uh, start debugging. So this is a small code where we can see, you know, there is a listener here, which is just, you know, after 
I get the button event, I, I, my control will come here and I'm doing some, this is just a dummy code just to demonstrate a single uh, step there, right? So I'm just initializing some value, doing some calculation on that and just returning that value, right? So this is what we are going to see it now. Now, to do this, we have uh, certain plugins, right? So you can see here, we have a plugin called Pcloudy plugin, which I have already installed it here. You can also install it from our website. You can get it from the, uh, there and you can just install. So when first time you install the plugin, you will click on that. This is how it will appear. You'll have to actually click on the Pcloudy plugin here when you install it first time. And then you have to provide the cloud name, your username and password API key. Right now, by default, the cloud name will be the device.pcloudy.com, which is our public cloud. But since I'm using it from a separate cloud, which is a private cloud for me, so I'm just using private-live.pcloudy.com. But I can also use public cloud if I want to do it on a public cloud or a private cloud or a on-premise cloud, whatever I'm using. It. I have to provide my username, right, which I have already given it here. Uh, and password API, you can get it from your account. You can just log into pCloudy, go to your account name, go to the settings, and in the profile, you can see your password API access key. Just copy that from clicking this particular button here, and then you can paste it here and then just log in. So once you do, once your authentication is done, you, you, you must get this successfully authenticated things. Once it is done, you are actually good to go ahead and start using the uh, plugin, right? So I'm just clicking on the plugin now. I have done the authentication. And when I click on the pCloudy plugin now, it will allow me to select certain things. So I can select the uh, device location, which is private live. That's what I have given. And then there are a couple of options on the top, manual automation and device tunnel. So you have to go and select device tunnel, right? That is what we are talking about. We are talking about the device tunnel. Uh, concept here, right? So you have to go and select the device tunnel. Of course, uh, the cloud which you have logged into, you know, that cloud will start appearing it here. Now, once you select the device tunnel here and the appropriate cloud, if you are having a couple of clouds, you will see a couple of clouds. Otherwise, you will see one single cloud. Then you just say next by clicking it here. Once you go to the next step, you will start seeing the devices the list of devices which you have on that particular cloud so you can go and select the device right now i'm just selecting this google pixel with 9.0.0 you can also go and change that duration for which you want to book the device right so uh, by default it will be 10 minutes but if i'm just changing it to 15 minutes or 12 minutes i can actually do that you can use it for even uh, uh, 12 hours also if you want and then you just say next now once you do this it will show you the device and here there is a button which says generate device tunnel command right this is the device which we have selected once i click on this button we will generate a device tunnel command which will look something like this what we are going to see it here which is basically a adb connect local host colon some port number right i can copy this to the clipboard and then you can go and open the command prompt and run this particular command from there so the ADB connect localhost colon this, this, this. Now, once I've done this, right, I'm actually connected to the device. And if I just say ADB devices on the command prompt now, I should be seeing the list of devices which is connected and this particular device will be able to do that. You can see localhost 49164 is the device. This is the device. So it is connected on the localhost and this is the port on which this particular device has connected. Now, if you, if you just try to remember, you know, this is the Google Android Pixel. So if I just click on view screen from the same uh, uh, plugin, this is how you are going to see the uh, device, the same device, Google Pixel XL with 9.0.0. This is how the device will look like. Now, if I go back, yeah, if I come back to the Android Studio, I close this particular window in the pop up, and then I start debugging my application from here. And I can go to run and then I can debug the application. When I debug this application, you will notice that it will start showing me the device which is actually connected to my local workstation, right? This is the one which we have chosen, Google Pixel XL 9.0.0. And when I select that particular device, you can see this particular the little build is running now. It will start 
uh, you know, the build will get complete then it will start installing the application on the uh, on, on the device remote device you can say it's saying installing the APKs so basically it will install the application on the uh, on the device and then the application will be launched here then the application will uh, be available on this device and then you can actually start debugging directly from your own uh, SDKs right so you can see the application got installed and there are two buttons accept and refuse so if i click on any of the button you know that that's when uh, we are going to get the event here i typically on the accept button if i when i do it this is what the event i'm going to get it and then my control will come inside this there's a breakpoint already created here so my control should come and start looking at, uh, and start waiting there and just clicking on the accept button here this is just a sample project okay so i just click on the accept and when i do this now while doing the debugging when i when i've made that particular uh, command there right you can see there is a breakpoint and the control should come and stop here at the same time you are seeing all the variables whatever variables we are using it you can start seeing on that particular thing and this is how it it happens it typically when you do it uh, on your local machine also uh, you will get uh, the response something like this now here as we said that there is um, only con which we have is basically the speed so you may see it's a little uh, slow as compared to the device physically connected to your machine but yeah indeed everything is happening here so k is initialized to one the next one is about k equal to k into five which should be five so it should actually start showing yeah k equal to five now and then it will return the k there so this is the way you can actually do the uh, debugging here for your android applications Right. You can also run the unit test from here in case you want to run it in this similar fashion. You can run it on that. So basically, the device is uh, virtually connected to your local workstation, and you can you can uh, do a lot of things from there. All right. So, so once this is done. Uh, You can also actually, uh, you know, go to the reports and see what kind of reports we have generated, right? So again, I'm, we are just logging and view the <clears throat> page got logged out, so we are just logging in again there. going back to my bookings and selecting the device so this is a way you can actually go to my bookings page and again click on your uh, bookings the one device which you have connected for 12 minutes will be available there and this is how the page will look like wherever you have actually left the device now once you're done with your um, testing let's say I'm, I'm, I'm done with my automation uh, rather my debugging you know I can just click on the release button and I can release the device then I can go back to the reports and uh, I can go and see the report so basically in the reports also we have two things my active session if you see here ongoing session and if you click on this you'll, you'll be taken back to the device interaction page if I click on release back it will be released absolutely then you can go to the reports to see if there are any reports right so if i go to the reports tab and go to all reports this is a place where you will see all the reports now it may take a little while maybe a minute or so to appear that particular session because one minute is something which we take for the device cleanup process so once the device is cleaned up right once the device is uh, uh, freed from your account the reports will be available there whatsoever i have done so far on this particular device will be uh, the, the traces for that or rather the artifacts for that will be available in this particular report here so we have done it for google pixel yeah google pixel excel so this is what it is now if i just click on this button which is view report this is how the report will be shown to you so you can actually go through this report you can expand this you can get a whole lot of artifacts which i was talking about you get the entire performance metrics um, in terms of battery cpu memory for the test execution you have done now you will also get the logs and 
videos right so in case you want to see the videos you can also see those videos you can also share the reports so we have a link here which is called shareable you just click on that and then you can share that link with any of your team members to collaborate or any of your stakeholders no need they, they, they don't need to have the account with Pete Lowry so even if you, uh, they don't have any account with Pete Lowry you can actually still share the report with them and they can uh, you know just click on that link and open uh, the report and view it remotely so this is how uh, we can use device to learn these are the things which you can do with the device to learn, uh, for the Android now we are moving on to the next slide which talks about iOS scanning when we talk about iOS scanning the whole concept of uh, the device tunnel uh, which we have seen remains same here when I talk about iOS connect we are actually talking about connecting uh, the device or making the device virtually connected to your local machine for the iOS platform right so that is what we are referring to iOS can right so this, this is what we are going to see virtual USB on the iOS devices the debugging part of that the performance metrics uh, which typically the developers look at when uh, they use the X code uh, and you know if they debug their application or they run the unit test they can actually see the performance metrics from the X code and that's what you can also do with this P cloud devices remotely this is what we are going to see it now and uh, running the XC or XUI tests on uh, remote devices right and we are going to see of course the demonstration for that so again I do have the demonstration uh, of the uh, videos uh, which is embedded here we're going to see that i'm going to explain those things to you uh, looking at this slide again this slide talks about the uh, virtual usb on the ios so basically the concept which we have seen uh, for last two slides uh, the device tunnel and the device tunnel for android in the same fashion we are talking about the device tunnel for ios or virtual usb for ios where we are actually connecting a specific ios device and then uh, you know making a virtual connection with that on your local machine now the process of connecting the iOS device to uh, your uh, your local workstation is a bit different than what we have seen for the uh, Android for Android we have provided you the uh, uh, the plugins you can have the plugins there and through plugin you can the UI you can actually uh, you know, generate the device to the command and run it but for uh, iOS it's not uh, that way we have not created any UI because a lot of customers are not preferring the UI nowadays so we have uh, some utility which you need to run on your local machine it will generate certain commands you know to run those commands from your terminal and then you can actually make uh, you know a virtual connection uh, to a virtual USB from the device to your workstation right so that portion is something which we have not covered today uh, how you can actually create the tunnel command we do have several uh, videos available on the uh, internet in our YouTube channel you can get those from there so here we have tried to showcase you that you know the device tunnel command is already run the device is connected there and here is an X code through which I'm doing the debugging part so if you really look at it uh, this is a small code a very small sample code which we are trying to debug it here so you can see now when we have run this particular code uh, in a debug mode from the X code that application should get uh, launch here right in the uh, install and the launch in the device so this is what we are going to see it now the application uh, the sample application which we have test monk uh, application that application will get launched here installed here and then it will get launched you can see now the application got installed it got launched and there is something which we are adding we are adding the uh, email text field so that that got added here so this way you can actually see I'm actually you know uh, doing the debugging here so accordingly the entire parameters the attributes will start appearing it here which the way we have seen it for the Android same way we can see it for the uh, iOS also and you can see there are certain parameters uh, CPU memory battery disk network everything so this is something which you can actually see it as a part of uh, performance metrics of course I have another video where we can uh, show you how you can actually get it uh, this data when you are actually doing either uh, you no know, uh, unit testing or debugging you get start getting this data there this data is also something which you can actually 
expand, you can see what exactly uh, the C3 consumption or memory consumption or the energy impact on the on the device uh, by your application. So this is how you can actually going to use the iOS Connect feature to debug your uh, mobile application on iOS devices. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide to see how we can actually show the performance metric. So it's the same example where we have installed the same application here, the Demos application. And then if I just expand the performance metrics here, you can see the CPU, memory, energy impact, disk and network, right? So all these things you can actually see. This is something which Xcode provides to you. Now there is nothing great uh, which we are bringing in here. We are not providing any additional information here, but we are facilitating you. We are actually making you um, use this particular data even if the device is not uh, in your physical possession, even if the device is uh, remotely available, even if it is at peak cloudy, you can still connect that device virtually to your local machine and get all this data from there. In a similar fashion, we can also see the iOS uh, Connect uh, uh, feature for the XC test. So uh, there are certain tests, you know, this is a sample test which we have written, test example, wherein we are, you know, um, launching the application, doing certain things there. So such kind of things, if you have XC test or XC UI test, you can also run those tests uh, on, on um, remote devices by using the iOS Connect feature, uh, which we cloudy provides. You can see it here, the small login test is happening here. Now I have entered the email address, password, and then that's it. So this way you can actually use P Cloudy's device tunnel feature, the iOS Connect or the uh, Android uh, device tunnel feature to connect the device virtually to your local machine and then uh, use it for uh, your development purpose purposes. I mean, we do have certain customers who are actually using it to you know, develop their applications um, on, on, on the uh, devices, right? So they are, they are not only using this, uh, this particular platform to debug their applications or test their application, they're also using it for the development purpose. Right? So there, there are customers who are using it thoroughly uh, uh, on the cloud. So moving to the next um, uh, slide, we also have something called web debugging, right? So there are, uh, now this is a little interesting. If you see here, I'm on the, on the desktop, I'm opening a Safari and then I'm going to the, uh, I'm opening a certain page here, right? If you see here, it says uh, iPhone, right? The iPhone is detected. So if you use the iOS connect, the device is virtually connected to your local machine. So your machine is also saying that the device is there. So if I just go to browser, uh, and say um, the phone, if I just go there and open uh, the page there, right? The uh, peak lorry page, the same page is open here. And if I just see the entire things like elements, network, everything, whatever you get, uh, typically the developer options, all the developer options will be available here. But the whole advantage here and the best part here is if you move your cursor on this code and select, like in this case, I have selected here, the entire page on the mobile phone will get selected. So you can actually play with the entire CSS, entire code. You can change the page on the fly on the device by making certain changes in this code and do the debugging. So there are there are a lot of um, developers who prefer to do the debugging uh, like Safari debugger tools so that they can actually use it this way. So there are two ways you can use Safari debugger tool. One is the one which we have seen just now. Otherwise we have an embedded uh, Safari debugger here, we, even that you can use it there. So these are the two ways you can actually use the uh, debugging uh, part for the uh, mobile web applications, if you have any. All right, so the other use cases which we have uh, typically uh, for P Cloudy is the cross-platform tools, right? So there are multiple cross-platform tools which you can actually use with uh, P Cloudy by using this particular feature, this particular feature, right? So iOS connect, basically by connecting the device virtually to your local machine. So Xamarin, I mean, just to name some of those, Xamarin, uh, Adova, or UFT. So if you are using either of these three, right, you can actually, um, you know, 
uh, use any of this platform or any of these tools to connect and you know run your tests or run your code on the uh, uh, remote devices which is at the cloud uh, we have not restricted of course to only xamarin cardo or uft there are so many other tools which we have uh, or which you may have you may be having which typically needs the device to be physically connected to their usb port so all those platforms all those tools can be uh, used by leveraging the uh, device tunnel feature of P Cloudy uh, at this particular platform. So this is what we we wanted to showcase today on, in the webinar with uh, by concluding the uh, last slide of benefits. What exactly the benefits we are going to get it out of this thing is, of course, you are having the virtual USB. So without you having the physical devices, you can leverage the different hardware software configuration of devices which we have and connect those devices virtually to your local machine by using the virtual USB. You get the convenience of directly working with the phones instead of working with the emulators or simulators, right? Though you don't have the phone in physical presence with you, you can still uh, get, uh, you know, you can, you can leverage the devices which we have on the cloud and start working directly with the physical devices. And of course, you can actually save a lot of time by doing quick prototyping of whatever you are doing there by using uh, real physical devices which, which we have at PCLAB. So now I would like to open the floor for the Q&A session. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask these questions. Let me see if I have got any questions so far. So I believe uh, as of now there are no questions. Uh, okay, someone is typing in the question now. Let me wait. What is that question? Okay, so first question is from Mayan. He's asking, uh, can I debug all uh, kind of applications? Like, my, can I debug my hybrid and native applications um, and try it. Yes, Maya, you can actually uh, uh, debug both the applications, be it uh, hybrid or native. You can do it for both Android and iOS platform using these features which we have just uh, explained. There's another question from Gary. Uh, Oh, pretty long question, pretty long question. Let me read it for the benefit of all. Uh, so Gary is saying this is a very nice feature and I have used P Cloudy uh, with Android platform on the public cloud. Good. I noticed the debugging is uh, slow, especially installation part. Uh, is it something uh, wrong in his side? So to answer your question, Gary, no, there is nothing wrong on your side. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thanks to you that you are actually using P Cloudy and you are using the uh, uh, debugging feature there. And thanks for using P Cloudy, by the way. Okay, so in general, uh, the debugging will be a little slow as compared to the debugging of the device, um, application on the device connected to your local machine. Uh, mainly because of two reasons which I have explained in the beginning. One is, of course, there is a limitation of the USB uh, speed. And the second thing is about the network uh, which you are using. So network latency will create a problem, right? So these are the two things which will actually make your debugging process overall a little slower than uh, when you connect to the device uh, physically to your workstation. Okay, now coming to the uh, second part here, about the app installation, which you're saying it is typically the app installation is taking a little longer time. Uh, so app installation may take a little longer time depending upon a couple of factors. The first factor is, uh, of course, what is the size of your APK, right? If it is very huge, it will definitely take a little longer time. If it is small, 
it should not take that big yeah it should not take that big so this that this is the first factor the second factor is about the uh, capability right capability of the uh, device assets what is the software and the hardware configuration of the device right so if it is um, a high a high con um, configuration device it may not take that long but if it's a low configuration device it may take a little longer time though the uh, uh, the installation process in general will take a little longer time because the data has to move from the uh, device terminal which we have created which is actually running on the uh, USB via, uh, to the ADB command so it will be a little slow I, I know the answer is a little long but I'm sure you are uh, I've, I've covered the whole uh, thing uh, about that. Oh, thanks, thanks for that. So you, uh, I have addressed your question. Thank you so much. But if, in case you have anything else, please feel free to drop me an email, and I'll get back to you uh, personally on that. Okay, there is one more question. Uh, Okay, uh, there's one more question by, um, okay, there's a question by Devadatta Mohanti. Uh, I am the QC background, uh, how it helped me. Uh, so Devadatta, basically this platform is widely used by the uh, QC or the testing uh, engineers, yeah? Uh, you can actually use this platform to uh, run your manual test uh, cases of your applications. You know, you can use this device remotely by just connecting to the device from your standard browser and do the manual testing on these devices. One second thing is you can also uh, use this platform and these devices remotely to run your test automation cases on multiple devices parallelly. These are the two things which you can typically do. Third thing, even if you are having certain uh, uh, unit uh, automation test cases and you want to actually run it through through uh, Jenkins or your CI/CD setup, you can actually do that. We also have certain bots, uh, the autonomous testing on our um, uh, private uh, on, on our public cloud. You can actually leverage those uh, features as well to uh, run uh, uh, or to get your application tested uh, automatically uh, to get the quick sanity and the health check of your application right so these are a couple of things you can do it and one more biggest feature which we have which none of my competitors have is the follow me feature you can use that follow me feature to uh, manually do the testing on two devices at the same time so basically you can select two devices do the testing on one device and the other device will get tested automatically these are some of the things which you can actually do it there are a lot of webinars which we have already done on the manual testing or the automation testing uh, from the qc perspective so i'll request you to go through those videos or webinars and uh, feel free to ask any other questions if you have i hope i have answered your question Devagata. There's one more question from uh, Jim. Okay, so Jim is asking, uh, is there a way, the way we have shown the uh, Safari debugger for iOS, can we also do the debugging for Android uh, mobile web applications using Chrome debugger? Jim, to answer your question, yes, it is pretty much possible. We do have the inbuilt Chrome debugger uh, capability for the Android platform. Uh, you can actually connect to any of the Android device manually and uh, click on that particular feature which will be shown on the left hand side of the device called Chrome debugger. And then you just enter the URL, the mobile web URL which you want to open and then uh, you should be able to debug that application uh, on the Chrome uh, browser using Chrome debugger tool. At the same time, you can also use the uh, 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 device tunnel feature in case you want to use that. I hope I have answered your question, Jim. Uh, 
All right, so uh, I believe uh, there are no further questions now for me. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining the webinar today. If you have any further questions, please feel free to drop us an email and we will get back to you with the answers um, personally. And thank you so much for your time. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.